Okay, today we are going to address all the stuff that's been going on with Sierra and the video clip that she posted a couple of days ago uh, of a presentation done last year now. No, not even, was it last August? Yeah, some, it was like, um, you know, a year ago uh, by, Dr. P uh, by Pastor John Gray. He is uh, down there with Oldstein's church, but he just moved to some other church in some other place. I have all the details that I'll be going over as we talk about this man. Now, what I want to say first is that uh, from what I've seen, it's a whole bunch of sisters with low self-esteem and a poor understanding of what they hear and read. Uh, there's a lot of, of taking this, this mere statement as a personal attack. And it's like, what i mean the words he you use maybe he could have done you know use different words that wouldn't have triggered you guys like if you did so i'm gonna do that for you and i'm gonna break this down so that you can hopefully understand it and get out your feelings about ciara and thinking that she's attacking you and putting you down and talking about single women and all this other dragon drama that i heard online it just disgusted me y'all I don't, I don't know what's wrong with you there's nothing about what she said that you need to be feeling uh attacked over and but i'm gonna explain it to you and hopefully when you get finished with all of this um you'll have a better idea of what really the message really was This week, all over the country, black women lost their minds when Ciara, the recording artist, reposted a clip from Pastor John Gray at a 2016 presentation he did for women. In this presentation, he discussed the issue of how women shoot themselves in the foot, the women who are claiming that they're looking for a husband shoot themselves in the foot and contribute to men not taking them seriously. Now, Sierra reposted this clip and she put level up. You know, level up, don't settle. Those are her exact words. For some reason, thousands, probably hundreds of thousands of black women went crazy they determined that from her saying that that she was mocking their singleness that she was playing a dangerous game that she thought she was better than them and a host of other things now what the woman and what the pastor were saying were things that really every woman should know you know we've we've talked about them. i mean the phrase is don't buy the cow when you get the milk for free People really don't seem to understand that. And there seemed to be actually no understanding of the fact that Ciara was not talking to you in a way to put you down. She was talking to you in a way to lift you up. But people typically with low self-esteem always have some kind of inappropriate emotional response to something that they feel is making fun of them. That touchiness, that anxiety that always focusing on the negative of stuff um, those are all signs of low self-esteem you cannot take yourself out of an equation by a complete stranger said to, to in response to the millions of women who were asking her how they could get themselves a Russell just two or three years ago but now when she tells you guys how to do it you want to get all in your feelings about it but before we go too much further what I want you to do is listen to what Pastor John Gray had to say. I will let you hear the clip in its entirety for yourself. For any men that might be sneaking in on the women's conference on Daystar, you're listening. If you want a wife, ask the Lord to close the place of your flesh. The prerequisite to getting a wife is having your flesh closed. 
The other side for any of my single sisters is a God, what is about, where, 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 Lord, where am I going to be found, Jesus? I've been in here worshiping you perfect in all of your ways, but I'm still single. Here's what the scripture says. He that finds a wife finds a good thing. It didn't say he that finds a girl that he's attracted to, who he then begins to date, who he then calls his girlfriend, who he then buys a ring, proposes and makes her his fiance, who he then marries later, who becomes his wife. You're not a wife when I marry you, you're a wife when I find you. You become my wife when I marry you. But a wife is not the presence of a ring, it's the presence of your character. Too many women want to be married, but you're walking in the spirit of girlfriend. Ask the Lord to deliver you from that spirit and carry yourself like you're already taken. And I promise you, when you carry yourself like a wife, a husband will find you. But if you keep walking like a girlfriend, boys will play with you. Now, what, what I found so amazing is the number of black women who call themselves believers, right? They follow the Bible. They always talk about their blessings and God and Jesus and running their behinds up to church and all this stuff. Okay, so for those of you who follow that belief system, how can you then turn around and try to poo-poo what, what was said? How does that work? You say you want to, you know, you trying to walk this walk and you trying to be this and you running up to church and you believe in God and the Jesus and all this old stuff, right? You know, you want a, 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 a equally yoked marriage. You want this, you want all this stuff. That's what you say. But as soon as you're faced with the reality that you have to adjust something about yourself in order to acquire that thing, then suddenly it's a problem and everybody's against you and it's their fault and they messing with you and they're bad and all this other stuff that I heard. There were dozens of, of responses that were quite nasty in actuality and I was just astonished because you know, to me, there's some kind of disconnect. What you say versus what you do are not matching up. So when she, you know, Sierra was coming at you guys from the position that she she wanted, she's been where you are. She wanted love. She was making bad choices in men. That's how future came into her life. That's how she became a baby mama. She, you know, beautiful girl, talented, like all get out. You know, all the world was like at her feet where she could do whatever she wanted to do in the entertainment industry. But she was choosing idiots to go out with and an idiot to father her child. She admitted it. Okay, that's what this was all about. She had to come to grips with the fact that she was making poor choices. And she made a follow up tweet, which I will post here, where she, you know, she talks about that that um you know she was was that girl who wanted love but she had to realize that she was making the wrong choices sitting at home you know with a baby trying to figure out what to do to get what she wanted would make her dream come true and she said well she the number one thing that she realized is that married or not now see this is very important for all of you who say she's trying to shame you about being married and being single rather no that's not what she's doing you just all in your feelings and all on some shit that don't have nothing to do with nothing she says married or not i needed to love myself and that is the top thing that is so that's the top number one problem with most women is they don't love themselves they they love they say they love a man but you can't really love someone in a healthy way if you don't love yourself. What you do, you cling to them and you like, you know, are codependent on them and you just are trying to earn their love by doing too much and being too much and giving them too much, never saying no, always being there for them, never making demands on them. You don't do you don't handle the shit right. And then you end up all all drained and damaged and mad because you're still single now what the past you know i'm not religious so before we even get into this i'm the author of the book on the the, the scathing book on the black church all right so be, before you get all in that that's not me i'm talking about you who do believe because i don't so that don't have shit to do with me but you know you talk about the lord and jesus and all the stuff all the time how can you rectify that against some of the behavior that you do? You're not walking the walk that you claim that you 
want to find this you know god fearing man you have to your life has to be bound you have to be in sync your behavior and your words must match that's what the pastor is talking about that's exactly what he's talking about and that is where we're going to veer off this conversation we're going to talk a little bit about character because i think a lot of people don't really understand what character means you know she's not trying to make you um use her marital status as a weapon like somebody said um, you know, the onus is not on the woman to, to create the happy marriage. Nobody said that either. What they're saying is, if you want this thing, you have to be prepared for it. And let me, let me give you an analogy. You decide that you want to be a systems engineer. Okay. Now, you go to college, you take computer science courses, you take programming courses, you do all this stuff, hard work, networking courses, you do all this stuff, right? Why are you doing that? Because you're preparing yourself for the career that you want. You're walking the walk to make that dream come true. Please explain to me how you trying to get the goal of a God-fearing husband is any different. You have to meet the MQs for anything in this world. Okay, you're going to meet the MQs for a job. You're going to meet the MQs to get into university. You're going to meet the MQs to get a promotion. You have to perform. You have to meet certain standards of behavior, education, performance, whatever you, you know, whatever the situation. You have to meet certain standards and expectations of the people who want to hire you, be with you, admit you, whatever. Okay, whatever the situation is, there are certain things that you have to do that are prerequisite to making that happen if you are flip-flopping around having babies by every motherfucker who comes in the door and says hello to you you have no discernment as far as what kind of man you're gonna be around or have your kids around you just doing too much you're doing the most then you know how does that fit in to this dream of having a happy marriage that you claim that you have see you, there's some something is wrong the thinking here is all fucked up so let's talk about character what is character? A lot of ca character is who you are on the inside, not who you people think you are. Because people will act, people put on an act, and that's not really who you are on the inside. But see, if you're the kind of person who is the same 24-7, 365, no matter where you are, you walk the walk, you talk the talk, and you know, you, you're thinking, you're talking rather, and your words are in sync. So you're projecting an air of, of uh, responsibility. You're, re you're projecting dependability. You're, protect you're projecting your, uh, an honorable presence. You're loyal, you're patient. You have self-control. That's the key because a lot of people don't have any self-control. They do things based upon the situation where they are. They will do bad things based upon what they feel is the pressure of the people that they're around in that moment. You will change your value system. Like you deal, you dealing with some dude, right? He wants to have, have sex uh, without protection. Now, that's against your stance. You claim that you don't want to have kids out of wedlock. Like you claim all this. You, but yet you consent to do that. See, that's not walking with integrity. And that's not good character. Because you're not doing what you know you're supposed to be doing. You're not walking your walk. You just bend it in, you know, like a leaf in the wind. Just bowling around doing what other people want you to do. That is not a strong character. That is a sign of weakness. See, you guys, you just don't get it. And you think that these people are attacking you. They are not. They're trying to make you better. Just like what I do. I dig in your asses because I know you can do better. I'm not going to sit here and coddle you and tell you a bunch of pretty lies. I'm going to tell you about yourself so you can get off your ass and act like you have some damn sense and do shit right. Do it right so it's in your best interest and the best interest of any children that you already have. That's what Ciara did. Yes, yeah, she fucked up with Future. She admits it. Okay? There's no shame in her game. She's not trying to hide the fact that she made a bad choice in that tattooed fool. And, you know, but she moved on from that. She got her mind right. Okay? So you can do the same thing. Don't be mad at her because she did it. Be mad at yourself because you didn't. Okay? That's what you need to be doing. Don't be mad at her. 
You know, you got to have a forgiving spirit. You got to be determined. You have to be even something as, as little as being punctual. It shows respect for other people's time. It shows respect for your employers. It shows respect to get your kids on school at school on time so their little butts can learn. And they're learning punctuality from you, the importance of being where you're supposed to be on time. So, you know, these little things like these, all of these things, if you have a lax attitude about any of these things, then you don't have a strong character. And that's exactly what the pastor was talking about. So what can you do if you have a good character? What's some of the traits? I'm sorry. What are some of the traits of having bad character? I'm going to rattle some off. If you see yourself in here, you need to start making some changes. People who have bad character, questionable character, whatever kind of character you just really don't want to have, are lazy. They're jealous. They're horribly insecure. They're indecisive as fuck. They're impulsive. They don't like make a plan and stick to it. They just go willy nilly off doing some old raggedy stuff that, you know, is stupid. Um, They're hypocritical. They say one thing and do another. Overly emotional. That's like all these women whining online. Oh, just all up in their feelings about nothing. You dishonest. These are people who lie when it's convenient. You know, if you, I mean, either you're an honest person or you're not. So you can't be flip-flopping around and making excuses for, well, you know, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Nope. Uh, people who are disagreeable. They just want to, like, argue and fight and fuss and stuff for no reason. The desperate, the desperate women. De- you just give too much. You do too much. You be too much. You beg and whine and plead. And, you know, you just don't stand up for yourself. You let people run all over you. That's terrible behavior. That's just, just like, no character at all. Uh, women who are deceitful, demanding, cruel, and mean. You know, bossy. Stop letting, trying to tell everybody what to damn do. Let them live their life. If they fall on their face, oh well. I mean, you know, you can be there and, and say, well, you know, I tried to guide you, but you didn't want to listen. So what are we going to do to help you get back on track? That's how you show kindness and support to people. Um, the women who act crazy. You don't want to be chasing after people and stabbing folks. I've done that in my youth myself. You know, I did grow up and grow out of it. But it was something that you know I had to learn to control my temper. It was horrible. I admit it. I, and people who are arrogant. You know, just, there's no need to be arrogant. I mean, if you got the if you got the the heat, then just do what it is you say you're gonna do. Then let people see that you got your shit tight. That you don't need to sit around talking about it all the time. All that does is turn people off. So those are some examples, just you know, off the top of my head, that um, I can think of that showed good and bad character. Because character is is gonna be the determining factor. To how you respond to circumstances and how you respond to events and you can make or break your success by the way that you respond that's why I always be trying to like in every video I'm trying to get you ladies to focus focus get out your feelings and think right because those are the ways that you're going to be successful in your relationships I mean I figure you know you're gonna be successful in your career whatever that I'm not in that part of your life I'm in the part where you're dealing with your you know your romantic life and I'm trying to get you to understand that there's a certain uh, recipe for success and there's a recipe for failure and people who have you know a good character and have their plan you know their plan right will tend to have a higher success level does that guarantee that you will have success level does it guarantee like the pastor said you know he guaranteed I wouldn't go that far you can't guarantee what some two complete strangers are going to do but what it does do is give you an opportunity that you otherwise would not have because you don't meet the MQs, okay? That's minimum qualifications for those who aren't uh, uh, familiar with that acronym. So um, I think that, you know, somebody was saying, well, you know, the difference is a ring and a piece of paper and that what the pastor says is a hot piece of garbage. No, that's not the difference. Obviously, this person is either confused or this person is not a follower of Christ because a marriage is like a sacred thing. And just in every religion that I know of, I just, you know, it, it, that's just it. Marriage is like a sacred thing between a husband and a wife. So it's not just a ring and a piece of paper at all. And so this person here is confused. You know, marriage is a spiritual thing, at least it's supposed to be. 
you're joining your life with someone for the long haul and you know you guys have plans together you're going to raise a family together you're going to make a future together that is a serious and big commitment it's not just a ring and a piece of paper whoever said this is stupid okay then um someone wrote that you know something about not telling other men to act like a a husband for basic decency in relationships okay um you don't need to worry about what husbands are being told in relationships because that's not what he's talking about he's talking about a marriage okay that's completely different you missed the whole point he's telling you not to be bothered with these quote relationships in the way that you have been doing where you've just given too much you auditioning to be a wife that's what i call it i will put the link up to the video it's a video i did like six seven years ago but it's like you guys do too much you do you treat boyfriends like husbands that's what you do you give too much to them you cook you have babies with them you buy property with them you do all of this stuff and you invest all the stuff in a mere boyfriend so that by the time you know you talking about you want to get married there's no point in him marrying you what would he marry you for you done gave him everything already. He got the kids. He got, you know, bed partner whenever he wants. He's got a house. He got somebody cooking and cleaning and doing all the stuff without any of the commitment whatsoever. And you see these women running here talking about my man, this and my man, and I cook for my man. And, and you know, me and my, my man, you know, our kids, this and that. You're doing everything that a wife would do, and yet you're not one. And you never will be one. Because there's no incentive for him. What is he going to get more by marrying you that he's not already getting? Think of it that way. Okay, it's like going to volunteer at a at you know IBM or some Apple or, or com, whatever these companies, companies, uh, Google. You volunteer, you in there doing all this work for free, but you want them to hire you. Why would they do that when they're getting everything out of you for free? Why would they give you a job and have to give you some money? It's the same thing with marriage. So if you want to be a wife, then you have to figure out what you're doing wrong that's preventing that from happening. Will that guarantee you a husband? Absolutely not. Like I said, it positions you and it gives you an opportunity that you otherwise would not have. Okay, keep thinking of it that way. Just like when you apply for a job, you don't always get the job. Even after you get the interview, sometimes you decide it's not the job for you. They decide you're not the employee they're looking for, whatever. You know, it doesn't always work out. But you, at least by the fact that you got the interview, it shows that you were qualified for the position. And that's what he, the, what the pastor's trying to get you guys to do, to be qualified for the type of man that you say that you want, which is the type of guy like Russell. Russell is very, you know, I mean, he's like a godly man. I mean, you know, he's nobody I would want because I'm not, you know, I keep telling you, I'm not into that religious stuff. That, uh, I couldn't do that, all that. I'm not going to nobody's church. I'm not getting on my knees. I'm not praying. I'm not doing none of that. But for those women who are into that kind of thing, you know, I don't put anybody's choices down. But I'm just telling you, you know, you got to match your stuff. You got to really decide. Are you going to be an atheist and, and, you know, and just shoot the whole thing? Or are you going to follow the path that is written for women in your religion? You go, you've got to pick one. And that is what is the demonstration of your character. When you talk the talk and walk the walk, but you're all a dibbing and dabbing. You got babies by this motherfucker over here. You're fucking under, under this cutter. Then you run your ass to church and you're doing all this shit. See, no. And you want to be like, well, you know, Jesus forgives me. No, they give you a mistake. They don't forgive shit where you intentionally doing some fucked up stuff that you know is fucked up when you was doing it. And then want to sit around and, and, and to ask for forgiveness. That's not how it works. So these are my thoughts on this whole thing. I do not see where CR was in any way putting anyone down. What she was doing was sharing her 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 path with you so that you don't make the same mistakes that she did. Getting yourself involved with some knucklehead like future. And then sitting around with a baby trying to figure out, you know, how does she get so off track? And then she got her shit together and now she got Russell. Okay, so, you know, it's, it's, that's all she was doing was trying to get you guys to understand you got to level up. 
It's like you go to college from high school. Okay, you leveled up. You go from being, I don't know, some little file clerk or something to being the secretary to manager of the department to the regional director. Okay, you each one of those is a level up. Going from future to a Russell, that's a level up. That's what she's trying to get you guys to understand. Stop messing with scallywags and knuckleheads and jailbirds and all these people that don't have shit going on and don't have nothing to offer. Level your shit up. Okay, that's what she's talking about. I hope you get it now. This is Deb Cooper from SurvivingDating.com. You got some comments. I'm sure there will be plenty of them. Just post them down below. Bye-bye.